I'm Riyadh, a gay Irish-Iraqi filmmaker, YouTuber, and LGBT rights advocate. We so appreciate all of the thousands of young and old Irish people that voted. I grew up within the relative freedom of Ireland, but I was always aware that in 70 countries around the world, it's a crime to be gay. And in 10 of those, it's punishable by death. Even still, brave young activists continue to organize pride marches in some of the most anti-gay countries in the world, with authorities shutting them down with violent force. But I recently heard of a new country attempting to put on its first ever pride, Swaziland. It's a small, landlocked African country bordered by Mozambique and South Africa. Its population of just 1.3 million people is ruled by Africa's last remaining monarch, King Maswati III. He has authority over the government and pretty much everything else. In one of his latest rulings, he changed the country's name to Eswatini as a way of taking back power after decades of British rule. The British government hopes soon that it will be launched into the world limelight by turning it into a showpiece. The king isn't afraid of flaunting his cash. His 15 wives live in palaces, drive luxury cars, and are showered in expensive jewelry. The dozens of cars bought as presents for the king's family were just the start. The cost of the celebrations, including this state banquet, are estimated at some 20 million euros. This is all while two thirds of his people struggle to get by living below the poverty line without jobs. Societal discrimination of the LGBT community here is strong. For one, Gay sex is illegal, and sure, it's a law that isn't enforced, but still, it feeds into the country's deep-rooted homophobic beliefs. It's a fear that seems to trickle down from those in power, with the king reportedly describing homosexuality as satanic, and the country's prime minister calling it an abnormality and a sickness. So, I want to know, will it ever be possible for the LGBT people here to live in freedom, and can they really pull off their first ever historic Pride March? Before I make the five-hour journey to the Eswatini border, I'm stopping by Gay SA Radio, South Africa's only LGBT-focused station, which broadcasts from a converted family home. I'm going to meet one of their hosts, Milando. Good to see you! A 34-year-old gay Swazi man who fled to live a freer life in Johannesburg. He'll be returning to Swaziland for Pride this weekend, and it'll be the first time that he's been openly gay in his home country. Having only come out publicly in recent months, Milando was feeling nervous about being on camera. This is a big moment for you. This is the first time that you're doing something like this. And mm -hmm. it's basically, it's coming out on camera in a way to many people. Let's do this. <laughs> you want to do it? Yeah. I'm going to put it here for now. Like oh, that. yes. And it actually goes with the blue. It's cute, isn't it? Yeah. It was in high school that I actually even discovered the word gay and the fact that they are like-minded people. For me, it was fascinating. I was so happy to realize that I'm actually not alone. They actually even have got clubs, you know? I want to go to these places where you can actually feel comfortable. For me, it was like a country yeah. in its own, you know? Do your parents know that you're gay? Yes, they know. <laughs> and are they okay with it? Um, okay, they are. With time, though. My dad, um, it's, it's taken a while. I always felt that he never heard what I was trying to say, he heard what he wanted to hear. And I grew up not respecting but fearing him. And then I actually realized that he was experiencing homophobia because of having a gay son. I will never forget when I graduated, he hugged me for the first time. And I literally did not, did not know how to react because I'd never been touched by my dad in that way except for when it, gave me whooping growing up. And his whoopings, for me, it felt like he punishing me for being gay. What is it like right now in Swaziland for LGBT people? There's, there, there's, there's a population which I believe is more now understanding, but we've never had a platform for them to express themselves. They are that generation which we've been waiting for. We were cowards. We escaped. <laughs> and I'm only coming out now because of them, basically. You chatting to me now is, is a big deal. I know that we had to you know, talk over the phone yeah. and, and it took you a while to decide that you Want to wanted do to do this because... I was concerned over the backlash which might have on my family. I can't just say I'm an activist and end it here. I need to 
practice it. You're inspiring me just <laughs> sitting here beside you. And you know, this Saturday is, <laughs> it's going to have me in tears watching you in your country with your people marching. For me, it's going to be the best experience and also a nerve-wracking one. So you must know that in my heart, as much as you might be seeing the smile, if there's going to be a smile. <sighs> it's going to be a momentous, and not for myself, but for generations to come. I'm so super stoked that there's actually a brave generation of young men and women who've come together for this initiative, we're doing it for our children. It's incredible. <laughs> it's going to be an amazing moment on Saturday. <laughs> wow. It's clear that this event is more than just a party. For Melando and the countless Swazi LGBTs who fled, it's a historical statement of defiance and acceptance that they've been so desperately fighting for. Hi, Matt. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing? I'm good. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah, I can. You've got just a couple of minutes, Ryan. I've just got some quick updates for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. After months of planning and anticipation, it looks like the Royal Swazi Police Force may be about to pull the plug on Pride. With just two days to go, they're now claiming that they only offered to provide a security service and that the event was never actually approved. And with increasing press attention, it seems that the authorities have become worried that they may be seen as supporters of the LGBT community. And they definitely don't want that. Recently, prominent Superintendent Kulani Mamba said on record that LGBT people should not be given free reign to strut their stuff in Eswatini. So with last minute negotiations happening between authorities and Pride organisers, it's now just a waiting game to see what happens. He seems to think it will go ahead, that Rock of Hope will pull it out of the bag. Um, we just need to, we're here now, so let's just keep going. sent a petition and it says stop promoting the unhealthy LGBT lifestyle. You did not tell the truth that you're trying to recruit and promote homosexuality secretly. Now you want to parade your agenda in public. You have announced that in June 2018 you will have a gay pride parade. Our children's morality and innocence are at stake and promoting homosexuality in this manner is very wrong especially for children. Also, be aware that there is no such thing as gay rights. Oh, okay. This is really worrying, though, because there are 1,663 signatures on this petition. Like, that's more than we're probably going to get there on the day. And these are people who have read this, obviously agree with this, and who will likely show up. They truly believe that homosexuality is uh, a sickness. It's written by concerned parents of Iswatini. And what happens if your kid ends up being LGBT? Mm. That's what the parents should be thinking about. This morning, I'm on my way to FLAS, the Family Learning Association of Swaziland, who offer a glimmer of hope for a country struggling to cope with the HIV and AIDS crisis. They provide sex education, free contraception, and send emergency medical services to some of the most remote parts of the country through a small fleet of mobile clinics. Eswatini has the highest prevalence of HIV and AIDS in the world, with one in three adults infected with the virus. While the country has almost half the rate of new infections in five years, the effects of this disease can still be felt, with 3,500 people dying from it every year, driving the average life expectancy down to 60 years of age for women and as low as 53 for men. 
And even though 94% of HIV transmissions in Eswatini are through heterosexual sex, many LGBT people are afraid that if they test positive, they'll be found out and disgraced. How bad is the HIV situation for the LGBT community here? They've been living in fear. They can't go to access services and clinics because they will be castigated. They'll be told it's immoral, it's ungodly. So most of them you find that they then live in fear without disclosing their own sexual orientations. It then raises the issue of HIV prevalence. It raises the issue of gender-based violence against them. Since they can't go to report these cases in police, they can't also report the harassment because there will be no instrument that will assist them in the particular instances. I think it's absolutely mad that there are gay men in this country who are so afraid of who they are that they won't go and get the care that they need. They might have HIV, they might have something else, and because of that, they're getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And there's absolutely no doubt then that there are young gay lives being lost in this country because they're not being given the treatment that they need, that doctors are discriminating, doctors are laughing at them that families are kicking them out if they come out. So instead, they live an unhappy life in the closet, they get sick, and they don't get better. I'm interested to hear what the experience is like for gay women in Eswatini. So I've come to Mbabane Market to meet Alex. Hi, hi. hi. Yes, hey. Alex, hi. It's so great to meet you, hey. finally. Hey. How are you doing? To meet you, I am great. You are a vision. Thank you. Like sunshine. Well hey. What's it like being a lesbian in this country? Uh, there's a lot of homophobia. I think it's not very different from all the other groups. But because we're women, we are sexualized more than the other groups. So for that reason, I'd say it's a bit easier. I guess, you know, maybe you can pass as a straight woman easier than a exactly. gay man can. But again, that then means I have to come out to every single straight man I come across. So. Hi, lesbian. How are you doing? Exactly. Hi, lesbian. <laughs> Can you not just say, I'm not interested? No, you can't, because firstly, what they'll do is they'll try to buy you a drink, and as soon as you tell them that you're a lesbian, they're either A, going to try to change your sexual orientation, or B, get angry because they feel cheated, somehow uh, like you're their property, right? How did your parents react when you came out? Not very positively, I'll be honest with that. My mom basically threw me out of the house for a number kidding. of days. Yeah, she did. I have no money in my pocket. I haven't had any food. It's early in the morning. She's just like, pack up. She starts cleaning the house. Just leave. How did you forgive your mom? for basically making you homeless. I, I flash back to my teachings and other people's experiences who have not been welcomed back into their families who are still completely lost by themselves. And I felt I'm actually lucky to have a mother who at the end of it all was willing to take me back. It was at this moment that our interview was stopped by a group of local teenagers who were curious to find out what we're filming. I took the opportunity to hear what they think of tomorrow's event. Hey, hey did you guys hear about this um, parade that's happening tomorrow? The gay parade? Yeah. That's up, Those are going to be petrol bombed, by the way, on their way to the parade. No, that's, that's not, not a gonna nice happen. thing to say. Yeah. I'm just the truth, man. That's what's going to happen. You know, I don't, I don't think Gay people happen. are not really welcome in SD. People don't feel comfortable with gay people because they're not used to it. Mm. Unfortunately, in life, we have to be uncomfortable sometimes in order to grow. What's the purpose of having you sex? Don't have to yes, the purpose for of sex is for reproduction. For pleasure. No, 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 no. Okay, so you don't, en you don't enjoy sex? I enjoy sex with females. Enjoy is it. there pleasure having sex with a guy? Can you Absolutely. There is. Absolutely. I don't believe that, man. What if your older brother t said to you, I am gay? <laughs> you are gay. Up, man. You are gay! You have to accept. <laughs> what would happen? You have to do, you know, get used to it. Would you maybe think about doing that with everyone else? Living with it? Learning about it? Maybe. Do you have any gay friends? Yes, you do. <laughs> not that I know. <laughs> you do? Yeah, not that you know you of. You That's the answer. Gay friend. And how do you know that? Because I'm right here. <laughs> yeah. You're doing an interview about the gay documentary? Yeah, this is a gay documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you don't do look gay. I have a question for everyone. Everyone around the world. This yeah. is a kingdom. It belongs to the king. 
Do you think the king would allow gayness? If I had a chance to meet the king, maybe I could have a nice conversation with him, like I had with you today. And maybe he would feel like I can let these people live and I can live separately and then we can all be happy together. I find that quite difficult. He's not gay. He's oh, not gay. You don't have to be gay. He has a harem of 15 wives. I know, but you don't have to be gay to allow gay people to be happy and to live freely. Maybe today because you, you met a lesbian, and you met a gay person, and you had a good conversation. Now you know that we're not scary. We're, we're just, just normal. We know you won't rape us. Of why would we do that? <laughs> hey, you're not. That's the type of discrimination we hear. You see. I know, but it's wrong. That's the type of things we hear. It's wrong. Yeah. When you come across people who say that, now you're going to question it because you met a gay and lesbian person who didn't try to rape you. I'm going to correct them because I've met them now. Well, are you okay? Yes. Come uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> what a moment. Yeah. They that did change though, didn't they? About it halfway? Did. It, it took like 10 minutes. It didn't even take that long. You did it in 10 minutes. See, that's all it takes. It's a bit of visibility. Like yeah. it, if you speak to an LGBT person, you realize they're not scary, that they're mm -hmm. just like you. They have an aha light bulb moment. Like, yeah. The guy with the chain, yes. he was like, Hmm. You're not so bad after all, are you? <laughs> it was quite a change from the, yeah. oh no, that's so wrong, to, oh yeah, maybe you're right, maybe you're right. That was really lovely. They learned and we learned, and that's all you can ask for. <laughs> Being surrounded by those who are disgusted and desperate for pride brought me to reflect on the importance of my first pride and the impact that it had on me. I was 16 years old, I was in the closet, I felt alone, I felt like I was sick, and I'd just been through about four years of thinking that I need to find a way to change this, to make myself straight. I snuck into town with my best friend, the only person who knew I was gay, and we stood there at the Pride Parade, not knowing what this thing was, surrounded by thousands of people. And Panty Bliss, this drag queen and activist and the Queen of Ireland, really, came out on stage and just gave this speech that has been burnt into my mind. She said, I want more. I will continue to want more until each and every one of us, from the butchers type to the femiest gay, can walk the streets of this city without fear of intimidation or attack. I want more. There is no such thing as gay rights. And the crowd erupted in cheer. And I'm there looking around, tears rolling down my face, not quite knowing why I'm crying. And then it hit me. After all of this struggle, after all of this pain, after all of this self-hate, I had finally found my people. Although it's one day, that one day will stay with each of those people for the rest of their lives. They're probably going for a party, but they're going to get something else. And I know what that is because I felt it myself. I still feel it today. Yebo Art Gallery have been working non-stop to make sure tomorrow's march is as colourful as possible. They've cleared their studio and are hand-making some much-needed rainbow flags and banners. So why did you make them? Well, because we were all discussing and we were very excited about the first Pride Parade in Swaziland. Then we were like, what are we going to wear? We should have rainbow something. There was a great shortage of rainbow flags in Swaziland. So... Not anymore. No. Can I pick one up? Yes. Yeah. The team at Yebo aren't the only organisation helping the community. Being a majority Christian nation, many find themselves cast out of their church and family when they're discovered to be LGBT. On the outskirts of town, gay pastor Luke Kelly has set up a makeshift church in his garage, which has become a safe space for some of the most vulnerable members of the community. Most of the time I've, I deal with cases like they've been chased away from home, they have nowhere to sleep, they don't have food, I have to provide. They call me dead. They call you dad? Yes. I'm their father. Even if there is someone who is older than me, I'm their father spiritually. When you're intimate with another man, do you feel like you're sinning? Or do you feel like that is a beautiful moment? I don't moment? feel like I'm sinning. I felt like I was sinning when I had a... A wife. A wife. 
because after sex I used to you see my heart was pumping fast and I was feeling very guilty because all this it was not me in all in all I thank God because now I know who I am even if I'm I'm being criticized or whatsoever I don't care do you other pastors ever come to you and criticize the fact that you're preaching they and you're gay come. I'm ready for them oh yes they what? cannot come to me I'm ready for them what do you mean you're ready for them I am ready for them whatsoever they are critic I've got my Bible I've got verses here so I'll court they will court I'll court unfortunately I have no time to waste on people who doesn't want to listen who thinks they own God God is for us all. God is not a Christian. God is the God of all flesh. Well, thank you for what you're doing. These, these kids you. will remember you for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Thank you. God bless. Oh. As night falls on the eve of Pride, we finally get news that Mbabane police have agreed to let the event go ahead without restriction. With that, I'm on my way to meet a very excited trans woman from neighbouring town, Manzini. Hello. Polycarp lives with her older sister and niece in a one-bedroom house. I'm meeting her as she gets ready for a pre-Pride night out with a friend. As we as we, la we love shaking hands. Yeah. What's your favourite one? Show me. Oh. As, as a lady, I would, I would shake. Mwah. Oh. Mwah. Like that? Yes. Okay. Is this where the magic happens? Uh, but I don't sleep alone. I sleep with my sister. Okay, not that kind yes. of magic. Different kind of magic. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I we sleep don't. with my sister. <laughs> what about your boyfriend? I call him, baby, I would love to, to visit you. Say, okay, baby, come. Or oh, at times he will pick me up. Yeah. Oh, look at him. What now? When you look at that picture, do you get kind of like, oh? Yes. When I uh, look at this picture, I become so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. It, it tells me that, baby, I love you. Oh. There's no any other person I will love, oh, beside you. No, I just have this, this, this innermost peace. Although she identifies as a woman, Polycarp is forced to present as a man a few days a week, both for her safety and to please her parents. At times, they will say, don't put too much makeup. They like to say, just pretend. Just pretend, pretend you... Pretend what? Just pretend you are a boy. Wow. Y yet, we know you are not. I remember my auntie took me to my pastor for deliverance. They thought I'm demon-possessed. And then I went there, wow. and then the pastor said, uh, there's nothing wrong with this child. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. from there, from there, they started to accept me. When you walk around the streets here where you live, oh. do people stop you and say things to you? Yeah. They annoy me each and every day, each and every day. And one of them even, even talked to my niece and say, we want to rape, rape that gay. That one, the whole night, because, because he wants, he wants, will give him that himself, you know, that really hurts me. There is this feeling, whenever it's, it becomes dark, I just feel, you know, like I, I shouldn't go out, you know, because even if I, I just go out, maybe to, to buy a drink, I'll find a guy there and just grab me by the hand say, you, come here, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't re resist, is it? I can't. Even, even if I scream, ah, no, it wouldn't help. It wouldn't help because they would ask, who is screaming? Is that, is that, is that thing? That is what they usually call us here. A thing. Yeah. Tomorrow is a big day. Of course. Are you ready? I am ready. I can't wait for the big day tomorrow. Why? Uh, um, we want to show the world. We want to show Swaziland that we rock. Some of us never been to Pride, but 
this time around, the pride is in Swaziland. We will be there, no matter what, honey. No matter what. Finally the morning of Pride and I'm on my way to meet the other marchers. We have no idea how many people are going to show up or if the police are going to have a change of heart, but things are looking positive. So right now all the vendors are setting up. The ambassador has arrived. Pride flags are being handed out for free. You wouldn't get that in London. <laughs> the vibe is really good. The vibe is really good. Everyone's smiling. There's not one person here who isn't beaming from ear to ear. It's great, this is what Pride is meant to feel like. You guys were the first people to be at the Eswatini Pride. You guys are making history. A bright applause for yourselves. This is it, out onto the streets. I'm having fun. So, is there hope for the LGBT people of Eswatini? With its traditional views and anti-gay laws, the country still has a long way to go. The homophobia here is not rooted in hate. It comes from a genuine place of fear and misinformation that's passed down from generation to generation. It's a problem that isn't helped by authorities who are afraid of being seen as supporters. But what I've learned is that the people of this small country are incredibly respectful, welcoming and warm. They're willing to listen and change their fixed perceptions over time. Swaziland shows us what's possible when brave young activists come together with the deafening voice of the global LGBT community for one focused cause. Change is happening. There is hope. <laughs> <laughs>